Ganyu. It's been over a year since her first banner's release, and let me just remind you how good she actually is. She's super simple to play, her builds are not too expensive, her teams are quite flexible, she does a ton of damage, she's still as pretty as ever, and her voice acting fits her perfectly. Those are just some of the reasons as to why Ganyu continues to be a fan favorite over a year later. If you're one of the people that own Ganyu or plan to pull on her rerun banner, then you've come to the right place. I'll teach you everything technical that you need to know about Ganyu from her best artifacts and weapons to general playstyles and team compositions. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Starting off with the basics, let's talk about Ganyu's strengths and weaknesses to understand how we want to gear her in terms of artifacts and weapons. Of course, I'm sure that you all know that Ganyu has two levels of charge on her aim shot known as the Frostflake Arrow. This is her biggest mechanic that separates her from other bow characters, and the bloom from the charge attack level 2 arrow is extremely powerful and scales off both charge attack damage bonus and cryo damage bonus. This shouldn't be anything surprising, but I want you to keep this in mind for when we select our artifacts and weapons. Besides that, the rest of Ganyu's kit is quite simple. Some other things that we want to know is that her ascension talents are quite useful to bolstering her own DPS. The first one gives us 20% crit rate for any subsequent charge shots after firing a Frostflake arrow, and the second ascension talent gives us 20% crowd damage when under her elemental burst. As for Ganyu's weaknesses, in all truthfulness, there's not much that holds her back. I think if I were to classify a legitimate weakness for Ganyu, it would definitely be her vulnerability. As a DPS character who needs time to charge her aim shots, some enemies will have an extremely easy time interrupting your damage which plummets your DPS. This is especially true when we dive into the different types of Ganyu playstyles. The two main playstyles for Ganyu are either running a freeze team or a melt team. Ganyu gets a lot more safety when you're running her in a freeze team because obviously enemies move around less when they're frozen. On the other hand, a Ganyu focused on melt reactions will have a higher damage ceiling, but again the point about vulnerability will definitely be a much bigger concern for certain players. Generally in the melt team we have Shangling or Kazuha's elemental burst apply pyros onto the enemy for Ganyu to melt. Both Shangling and Kazuha's elemental burst don't really have the luxury of range that Ganyu does with her charge attacks. This forces Ganyu to play a little closer to the enemy to ensure that we have the pyro element to react with. Playing an aimshot character at close combat with enemies is definitely a difficult thing to juggle. Luckily for you, a strong shield character like Zhongli or Diona will definitely help alleviate any struggles that you have. A more in-depth discussion on Ganyu's team comps will be towards the end of the videos, but for now let's talk about Ganyu's artifacts. As mentioned in my overview of Ganyu, there are two main playstyles that Ganyu can take. The first is a freeze team and the second is a melt team. Depending on which type of team that you want to build, this will heavily alter your artifact options. If you'd like to play a freeze Ganyu, the only artifact set that you should try to get your hands on is the Forset Blizzard Strayer. This artifact set was made for freeze teams and there's no reason that you shouldn't be using it. Not only that, but all of Ganyu's builds are naturally cheaper compared to other DPS characters thanks to her ascension talent that grants 20% crit rate to consecutive Frostflake arrows. When combined with the Forset Blizzard Strayer effect, we get so much crit rate that this makes Ganyu one of the cheapest if not the cheapest DPS characters that you can get your hands on. As for artifact stats, a Freeze Ganyu wants attack percent in the sands, cryo damage bonus in the goblet, and crit damage in the circlet. When running the Force at Blizzard Strayer, we can ignore a lot of crit rate and have a lopsided crit ratio with tons of crit damage. Elemental Mastery is useless for a Freeze Ganyu, so our main priorities in Artifact Substats are going to be crit damage, attack percent, and energy recharge. And a quick note, if you do want consistency against non-frozen enemies, aim to get around 30% crit rate on Ganyu, because with 20% crit rate from her Ascension Talent, and 20% crit rate from the Blizzard Strayer set when enemies are affected by Cryo, that should give you a nice chance to deal consistent damage even if you can't freeze the enemy. As for a Melt Focus Ganyu, your artifact options change quite drastically. With the Melt Ganyu, we neglect our Elemental Burst and Elemental Skill in favor for maximum charge attack damage. This means our new best artifact set is going to be the Force at Shimanawa's Reminiscence. A 50% damage bonus to our charge attack is exactly what we want, especially when we don't want to use our elemental burst often and aren't too worried about losing energy. If you can't get your hands on the Force at Shimanawa's, then the Force at Wanderer's Troop is pretty close in terms of damage output and it's slightly easier to farm. 
beyond these two four sets, nothing else really stands out for a Mel Ganyu. Naturally, if you lack any of the four sets, you can also use the generalist combination of the two set Blizzard Strayer with the two set Shimanawa slash Gladiator if you have nothing else to run. Artifact stats for a Melt Gone Yu include Elemental Mastery or Attack Percent in the Sands, Cryo Damage Bonus in the Goblet, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage in the Circlet. The reason EM is a viable choice in the Sand slot for a Melt Gone Yu is because oftentimes with things like Amos Bow and Bennett together, you already have an overflow of attack sources. In this case, you have the choice of running EM in the Sand slot, which will actually help your DPS out a little bit rather than hinder it. Aside from that, these substats focus crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and elemental mastery. Crit rate is a much more important stat for a Melt Gone Yu, and now you want to have at least 50% crit rate, if not even 60% crit rate, since we don't have any benefit from the Foresight Blizzard Strayer. Unlike artifacts, weapons are actually pretty similar no matter which type of Ganyu playstyle you decide to focus. There are two weapons that I like to mention after the DPS options that are tailored more towards a sub DPS slash supported playstyle, but when it comes to DPS, the best options are the same between a freeze and a melt Ganyu. As expected, the best in slot for Ganyu is Amos Bow. The reason this bow is so good on Ganyu is because the weapon's passive also applies to her Frostflake arrow damage. This is essentially doubling the value out of the weapon's passive, and it's no surprise that Mihoyo has decided to run it alongside Ganyu again. The next best bow options include Prototype Crescent, Skyward Harp, Thundering Pulse, and Polar Star in that order. If you have an R5 Prototype Crescent, this weapon can easily outperform any of the other 5-star weapons at R1. The only issue with this weapon is that if you do want it to outperform, the enemy needs to have a weak spot so you can trigger the passive. If you cannot trigger the passive with a weak spot, then the effectiveness of this weapon decreases significantly. Skyward Harp, Thundering Pulse, and Polar Star are all just stat sticks. They give us a ton of crit stats, but their passives are nowhere near as good as Amos Bow, putting them a step below. The last two options for a DPS Ganyu are Blackcliff Warbow and Hamayumi. Blackcliff is just a 4-star version of the other 5-star bows that aren't named Amos Bow, and the weapon basically just gives us a nice portion of crit damage and has a really good base attack stat. Hamayumi is a weapon that looks good on paper but needs to be utilized correctly or else it falls off extremely hard. In freeze teams, you almost never want to use this weapon because you're constantly going to spam your elemental burst off cooldown. And as for melt teams, you cannot use this bow with the 4-set Shimanawa's Reminiscence artifact since their effects are conflicting. Therefore, if you want to use Hamayumi on a Melt Gone Yu, I'd advise you to use the 4-set Wanderer's Troop for the least conflict in gameplay. Last but not least, I did mention there are two supportive weapons that you can use on Gone Yu if you're focused on a quick swap team that spams elemental bursts and skills between your party members. These two weapons are the Moon's Moon and the Elegy of the End. If you're using Ganyu as a main DPS, I want you to completely ignore this weapon, but otherwise, if you're curious about where these weapons come in handy, stick around to the end of the video while I'll give you a few team options that use Ganyu as a supportive DPS rather than a main DPS. For the last part of the guide, let's dive into Ganyu's most popular and practical teams. For the whole video, I've been saying Melt Ganyu and Freeze Ganyu, but how do you actually form these two teams? Well, let's start off with a Melt Ganyu. Aside from our Coco Goat, this team also has Bennett for an attack buff, Shangling or Kazuha for pyro application, and Diona or Zhongli for shield. Having Bennett in the team is how you can see those insane instances of melt damage, but if you can't spare Bennett, it's not that big of a deal. You can replace him with any other pyro shield character like Toma, Shin Yan, or even Yan Fei with C4. The main thing we want from this character slot if we're not running Bennett is the pyro resonance with Shangling and a character that can generate pyro energy for Shangling. In the third character slot, you can take your pick between Kazuha and Shangling. Bennett's elemental burst will apply pyro to your characters, which Kazuha can swirl to ensure that he gets a pyro-infused elemental burst. Shangling is a lot less complicated when it comes to pyro application because she just directly hits enemies with her pyronado for Ganyu to melt. Ultimately, these two characters are the prime candidates to apply Pyro for Ganyu because the interval at which they do so pretty much matches Ganyu's charge shot interval. 99% of the time in the last slot, you're going to want Diona or Zhongli. Most players aren't whales and don't have a C6 Ganyu that can blow up any type of content in 2 or 3 charge attacks, 
so the shield survivability is crucial when playing the close range Melt Ganyu. Next up, Freeze Ganyu is the other main option that you're probably considering. In this team, aside from our Coco Goat, we have some source of Hydro application, a Cryo support, and a character that can utilize the Force at Viridescent Veneer. For the Hydro application, generally you have the choice between Mona and Kokomi. I understand that both of these characters are 5 star characters and the reason that Shing Chu isn't as good with Ganyu is because she's a character that doesn't focus on normal attacks at all, making Shing Chu's elemental burst somewhat useless. If you have neither Mona or Kokomi, then the only thing you can do at this point is rely on Shing Chu and Barbara, plus an Animo character to swirl Hydro and infuse their elemental burst with the Hydro element. In the Cryo support slot, the most popular option with Ganyu is Diona because again she provides both healing and shielding. If you already have healing somewhere else, then this character slot can turn into a character that offensively buffs Ganyu like Shen He or Rosaria. For the final slot, the Animo character can be really anyone you want. The most popular options are going to be Venti or Kazuha, but other characters like Jean or Sayu can also work wonderfully. Just don't use Xiao here. That's the only character that doesn't really synergize well with Ganyu in the Animo cast. And before I end the video, I did promise to offer some teams with Ganyu where she's not the main DPS and instead supports with her elemental skill and elemental burst. If you want to use a weapon like Moon's Moon or Elegy of the End, then pay attention for this last minute or so. The same Freeze team I talked about can be adapted where Ganyu uses Moon's Moon and takes the backseat with her elemental burst. Instead of using Diona as our second Cryo character, we want to use a DPS-oriented Cryo character like Aika, Rosaria, Kaya, you name it. Essentially, Ganyu's Ascension Talent can grant 20% Cryo damage bonus to any active character in her elemental burst, not just herself. This makes her a surprisingly viable option to support other Cryo units, while her elemental burst deals a ton of damage off-field with Moon's Moon. Otherwise, if you want to use Elegy of the End instead of Moon's Moon, then we can use what I like to call the Pay to Win Liyue team. This is essentially a standard Hu Tao team, but instead we swap Albedo for Ganyu. What happens here is that Ganyu and Xing Chu are able to freeze enemies, allowing Hu Tao to deal melt damage with her charge attacks instead of vaporize damage. Elegy of the End also provides extra elemental mastery to Hu Tao, which is what makes Ganyu such an unexpected support for Hu Tao. However, if you don't have Elegy at the end, I'd typically avoid using Ganyu and Hu Town together because both are very valuable DPS characters. And with that, that's all I have time for today. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. You can follow me on Twitch, join my Discord, sub to the YouTube channel, or whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.